welfare major and I'm also working on my Asian American Studies certificate. And I am running for co-chair, secretary, and volunteer, but today I'm going to mainly be talking about coaching. So there are three reasons that I think I would, why I think I would make a good co-chair, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, I have a lot of experience working with ASU, for example, this year. Um, as some or many of you may know, I am currently the education chair. And so as education chair, um, I've been doing a lot of different things. Uh, mainly, I've been planning and organizing workshops and events. Um, workshops including the API Sexuality and the Model Minority Workshop last fall. And then um, also in the fall, I collaborated with the Asian American, or ASU collaborated with the Asian American Studies program. Um, and so I did a lot of the planning and contacting with Lynette, the director of the Asian American Studies program. Um, so I'm really glad that that went through and it was very successful. And it was really cool to just be able to meet professors and to mingle with different staff, uh, especially Asian American, Asian American allies. I think that's really important. Um, and so I think that facilitating has definitely helped me to become a better public speaker. I'm actually usually very shy and quiet, but I think that being a facilitator definitely pushed me out of my um, comfort zone. And I think that's really helpful um, for ASU and also for um, um, and I also think that planning workshops has helped me to better understand social justice issues and um, learn how to conduct a curriculum and plan things. So that's pretty pretty cool because it's something I've never done before. So I really enjoy doing that. Um, uh, also, as education chair, I was I oversaw the education committee, and so um, Carl and Perdon both sat on the education committee, and it was awesome working with them. Um, so I really I really enjoy overseeing. And I think that it definitely helped me to practice. Um, I was kind of like a mini co-chair for the education committee, so I think that I definitely got some practicing. And if I was to be a co-chair, I think that this experience will definitely be helpful if I was to become the ASU co-chair. Um, so I was able to kind of delegate tasks to allow them to take on some leadership skills by um, having them facilitate the meetings. Um, and then also just being able to work with them and plan an event, I think is really helpful because as co-chair, you have to be able to oversee everyone's tasks and um, duties um, at the event and also before in the planning process. Um, so these are just a few examples of me um, as education chair that I think would come in really handy as the ASU co-chair if I was to be elected. Number two, I feel that I have a lot of experiences outside of ASU as well, especially working with the Asian American and Pacific Islander community. For example, um, in the summer of 2011, after my freshman year, I had an internship in Washington, D.C., where I interned at a nonprofit organization called Organization of Chinese Americans, um, also known as OCA. And there I was placed at Asian Pacific Islander American Scholarship Fund, also known as APIASF. Um, so basically, it's a nonprofit organization um, to promote higher education, to be able to provide resources and scholarships to APIA youth to attend colleges. And that summer, I became very passionate about higher education. Um, and also, it's, been, it's, it's important to me because um, when I was applying to colleges, I didn't know, I didn't know, uh, I didn't have resources or I didn't know who to talk to or how to apply for FAFSA or what scholarships was available to me. So I think that it's really important. Um, so that summer was awesome, um, working with OCA and APISF. And also that summer, I also did a um, training with Southeast Asia Resource Action Center, CREC. Um, the training is called Leadership and Advocacy Training, LAT. And there is, it's a two and a half day training, and on the third day, they actually, they train you for two days, and then on the third day, they send you off to um, the uh, legislative offices to be able to um, share um, and advocate for a social justice issue. And I actually did mine on, um, on uh, education, so it was a very educational summer that summer. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of experiences that have really helped me um, to become the person that I am today, and it has made me really passionate about serving the APIA community. Um, so these are just some of my experiences, and then I'm just going to share a really short story with you. Um, so number three, I feel like my personal life has definitely impacted the reason for my passion to help the APIA community, um, as well as to create a stronger sense of community um, within the APIA community. 
So um, in August of 2010, I came to UW Madison with no close friends from high school and no families nearby. And I was really scared at first, but I definitely was excited to be on my own. So freshman year, I lived in Witty, and I was the only person of color on my floor. But I thought to myself, oh, you know, that's no big deal because I went to school my whole life with a ton of um, a ton of Caucasian white friends, and I definitely didn't have any problems um, getting along with them. So I didn't think it would be. It. I didn't think anything of it. But then, as the school year continued, I began to feel kind of very excluded from my floor, and I would always get these strange looks. And I just thought, you know, did I do something wrong? Like, what did I do? And then um, I guess I began to feel like an outsider, and um, I started staying over at my friend's dorm a lot. Um, so I basically was just very lost and confused, and kind of like, I don't know, was it my race? Was it because I'm Asian, or is it because my room smelled like rice? Like, I don't know. <laughs> so um, I guess I just really felt like I didn't belong anywhere, and I didn't have a sense of community. And that's where ASU came in and really helped me to find myself I just want to say that I'm really happy that I got to be a part of ASU this year and I hope to be um, a better and stronger leader as co-chair of ASU. Thank you. Hypothetically If your co-chair like just bailed on you and like quit, what would you do? I feel like that's very, it's challenging, but um, well, I'll give you a little bit of example. So this year I was, I had another co-chair, I had another co-education chair um, person with me, and we were able to, um, so we worked together, but then she was too busy, so she couldn't do it this year, uh, this semester, and so I was, um, I kind of had, I had my whole entire, everything else kind of just fell on me, and I was really worried at first, because I didn't know how I would be able to do it without my, um, the other person. But luckily, I had the ASU Education Committee, which thank you, um, they were just so wonderful, and it was it was really good to be able to work with, um, to be able to rely on someone else. Um, and the committee, I think, did a great job. And so I think that as co-chair, it would be really helpful to kind of push for the ASU Executive Board to come together to really help um, to help me out in running the running the board. Cause something that I like to do is. If, if I'm a leader or if I'm in charge, I don't want to be the only one like making decisions. I want to be able to cover everyone's decisions. And so uh, that's something I would do. So as the co-chair, your position is pretty much equivalent to the president of the Asian American Student Union. And as a president, you have the job of shaping the vision of the, community, of the organization, kind of the creed of the organization. How would you do that if you were to obtain the co-chair position? What do you see as the the creed of ASU, I guess? I guess from, uh, I talked about it a little bit in my speech, but I definitely think that uh, a sense of community and belonging is super important, especially, I mean, we all are UW students, and we go to this huge university with predominantly white students, and I think that it's so easy to get lost and not not really know where you belong or find, to be able to find home. And so I think that um, one of my goals for ASU is to definitely create that sense of and make it definitely stronger because that's something that I didn't have and that I found coming into ASU. Um, so it's definitely something that I want to keep on doing as much. Um, we have two board members were to have like an issue and there were a lot of tensions um, that occurred. So if two board members um, were to have like a conflict with each other and there's like a lot of tension going on, like how would you bring about like solving it? So the first thing I would do is um, pull them aside separately and speak with them individually. Um, and so I would be able, or excuse me, um, I would talk with them individually and kind of check up with them and see what's going on. Um, whether it's something personal in their life that's going on that's making them difficult to work with each other, or work, or, or their um, their impact on the rest of the board. Um, and so then after that, I would. Um, I think that it's important to make goals for each person, so uh, being able to make steps towards improvement for each other. Any other questions? Yes. So, um, as important as it is to have, you know, um, a passion for the you know, issues within the Asian American community, it's also very important to have passions outside of that. Um, so, what are, you know, two of your passions that um, 
um, that might, you know, that aren't necessarily, um, you know, API related. Yeah, um, just to kind of get a sense of kind of like who you are yeah. and um, possibly, you know, your, your leadership style. Yeah, so um, I would definitely say that one of my passions is definitely art. And um, I actually, when I came to UW, I thought that I was going to major in art. And the reason why I love creating art is because I feel like you can be, you can be whoever you want to be. Um, it's up to you. And um, I don't know, I guess I just really enjoy it because it helps me to relax. I would just like be painting and thinking about, you know, what do I want to do today or, you know, how do I want to save the world today? But, um, but I, I would definitely say that art, it definitely puts me in my happy place. Um, and it just lets me be free to think about things in the world a little bit. So definitely art. Um, another one, I think y'all probably already know, I love baking. Um, and the reason why I do is because I think that it really makes other people smile, and that's what I really like. Um, it makes me smile too. Um, I mean, I'm a big like sweet tooth kind of person, but I, I definitely think something about me is that I just want to make other people happy, um, and I think that baking does.